Okay, so welcome everyone <laughs> and a very sorry late start, nine minutes late. Um, I'm Claire, I'm the Director of Learning Commons at DHSB, um, which mainly involves helping students and staff with digital skills, um, working with Google Reference School and now I'm part of the EdTech team as well. So today it's going to be a really nice um, short webinar. Everything that I talk about will be sent out to you, okay? So if there's anything that you miss, it will be sent out to you after the webinar. And we're going to have a look at how you need to set Google Meetup so that you can be using it correctly and uh, most importantly, safely. So before we um, start, there's a little bit of housekeeping before we move on. I am recording, so it's really helpful if you could ensure that your microphones are off so that we can get as best sound quality as possible. Um, it's up to you whether you have your camera on or not. There's, there's no requirement for us to check that you're here. There is a chat facility, um, which you'll find in the top right. If you could direct any questions to that while we're recording, and then I can um, answer those throughout. It just means that you don't get onto the recording. Um, and then if you want to hang around and have a chat, at the end, then that's absolutely fine, okay? We'll stop recording as soon as the main webinar section is, is over. And finally, this is um, part of our role as an EdTech demonstrator school. So we're helping schools and colleagues out with support for remote education. We're funded by the DfE as part of their Get Help with Technology initiative. Um, so if you need any more details on that, the website is on there, or please feel free to email me at claire.buckler at dhsb.org. Okay, so Google Meet, what is it? Well, it's an enterprise grade video conferencing call software. Um, it comes free as part of the Google Workspace or G Suite for Education offer. It is a relatively new offer. It, it's come out of the back of something called Google Hangouts and they've worked incredibly hard to get it where it is today. I think um, when they first had Meet as part of their service, sorry, someone wants to come in, there we go. Um, they had a couple of people working on it, and now I think they've, they've got closer to 100 because they're trying to meet the need for teachers um, and obviously everyone else as we moved um, online. So in order for your school or your domain to use Meet Video Calls, your admin has to turn it on. And we'll look at that um, on the next slide. You need to be signed into your Google account to create the video meeting, but like all conferencing um, software online, anyone can join. Once it's been turned on, you need to ensure that you've got the correct equipment. Now, there's nothing fancy here, um, but like all um, conferencing software, it's quite processor heavy. So you need to just be aware. And, and this is kind of like it will help you solve any problems that any of your staff might have. So as a rule of thumb, you really need to always be working with the latest version of a web browser anyway. Obviously, Meet works best in Chrome. So do make sure you've updated your Chrome browser and, and that's a good tip to do anyway. You also need to have a look at um, minimum requirements. Now on the screen, there are some kind of advisories around it and that really, if you're gonna be video calling, you need to have two gigs um, of, of memory. It's quite processor heavy. So if you want to, like this call for me, there's lots of you on board, I've got um, my Pixelbook, which is, is quite a powerful machine, but there's ways that you can help your staff. So if you're having any issues at all with it, you can close all of the windows down apart from what you're um, wanting to share. Um, you can also um, make sure that other people have got their cameras off. So there are things that you can get around with and it isn't any different to any other video conferencing software, but you should probably just be aware that if you want to run huge webinars with lots of people dialing in, that you need to have a computer that's powerful enough to do that. Obviously you need um, a broadband connection and you need a, a web camera or a, a USB external web camera, although you can take part um, without the microphone and without the webcam. Um, sorry, there's someone wants to be let in. Without the webcam, um, and obviously does not have that interactivity. So just let someone in. Nikki, have you got a hand up? I'll assume no. So if you want to pop any questions into the chat, it's a little bit easier for me to be able to um, monitor that.
Okay, so are there different versions of, of meat? Well, yes, yes, there are. So the difference um, on how meat works for you depends on whether you pay for enterprise or not. So here at DHSB, we have an enterprise license. And if you look on the um, screen, you can see the added features that we get for that. Now, it may or may not be appropriate for you. Um, the main things that you do get are um, live streaming for up to 100,000. We also get the ability to have 250 people on board instead of 100. Um, noise cancellation is a, is a new feature, so it cancels out background noise. Breakout rooms, polls, Q&A and track attendance only come with enterprise. However, on the uh, right hand side there, I've got some Chrome extensions. Now you will get this sent to you and those are all live links. Um, so you've got Nod, someone wants to come in, bear with me. So you've got Nod, that allows participants to provide reactions during meetings. So if you've got Nod installed, you can get emojis like thumbs up and um, hand raise and that they, they let you react during the meetings. We've got hand raise, um, which is built into all of the standard, but this if you want anything extra. It's quite a cool um, feature if you've got a virtual class with lots of attendees. However, you have to make sure that everyone's got it installed, um, which you can get your admins to do for you. can push it out to everybody. Jewelist lets you share your presentation with your meeting participants but still watch them at the same time. So I don't know if any of you have presented from Meet, but generally the people that you're presenting to disappear and you can't see them. Um, with Jewelist installed as an extension, you can have two windows. So one for your presentation and the other one to see meeting participants. But of course you can already split your tabs if you're happy doing that. Um, and if you use the shortcut key, Alt and square bracket, then it will split your window into two for you anyway. So you don't necessarily need that. If you've used Zoom um, or any other video conferencing tool before, you might have faced challenges with muting and unmuting your microphone quickly when you want to speak. So if you install push to talk, for example, you've got a um, space bar that you can press quickly to mute and unmute your microphone. Um, however, if you're using Meet, Control D is a shortcut for on and off mic anyway. Um, other things that might be important and but you don't want to upgrade for uh, enterprise are the ability to track attendance so you can install meet attendance um, as an extension and that will take your attendance and send it to you in a google sheet it automatically records all the attendees of your meeting and the breakout room extension allows you to create several rooms um, and split your attendees across them so we have that as part of enterprise but we don't tend to use it as the rooms are not recorded the same way as the main room but obviously that's down to your school policy now oh, someone wants to come in bear with me so for the purpose of, of this webinar, we'll just look at the standard features only because that's what the majority of people will have. But I can talk about the extra functionality at the end if anybody wants to, to hang around. Um, also worth noting, if you have a look on there, is, is that we can record meetings and save them to drive um, with Enterprise. And with the normal license, you have this little asterisk. So currently, um, Education Edition customers can record free of charge and this was enabled i think whenever we went into the first um lockdown but what they're going to move to is an idea of a temporary recording i think basically they're, they're just obviously running out of a lot of um room to store everything so what will happen if you don't buy enterprise is your meetings can still be recorded but they'll go into a temporary folder and if you don't take them out and store them somewhere else then they will be um deleted <clears throat> Okay, so this section really is for your IT team. So some of you might have Google admin access, in which case these are the things that you need to check. But if you don't have access to this, um, then just take note of it and just check with your IT support. So all of the admin settings in Google can be turned on and off for individual groups. So the first thing that you need to do re really is make sure that you've been set up so that your staff and your students are in these separate containers. So in Google Admin, they're called organizational units. 
<clears throat> and at the very least, you need to have um, staff and you need to have students. So at DHSB, within our staff container, we've then got them separated into departments. And in our student container, we've then got them separated into year groups. But that's completely up to you and what your IT people think that you need. But definitely for Google Meets and for other services, you need to have the ability to turn certain things on and off for individual groups. So do make sure that you have your students in a separate organizational unit to your staff. So when you've turned the Google Meet service on, then any user can join video meetings in your organization. And you can also let users create video meetings. It's worth noting that by turning this on, you don't then stop yourself from using any other service. So you, you can still use Meet and you can still use Teams if that's what you're using. But you need to be able to turn on Google Meet for your organization. What you'll need to do, though, if you have a look at the, um, the screen, is there's a couple of things that you need to make sure that are turned off for students. So the ability for students to record their meetings, that should be off by default for obvious reasons. Only the teacher should be able to record the lesson that's going on. Also, the ability to stream, turn that off for students so that they can't do that. And also here, video calling off. So it might seem counterintuitive because obviously you'd think that they would need to have that on to join the video call. But this is what lets users place the actual video call. So turning it off ensures that students cannot start their own video calls with friends or, or with teachers. So off, recording off, streaming off, and attendance reporting is awful, is also off. OK, so as long as you've got staff and students in these separate groups, then you can change these settings. OK, now most of the problems that we've had inquiries about have been about students joining the room before teachers or students being in the room after the, the meet has finished or students starting their own recordings. And this is the thing that you'll need to do to ensure that that doesn't happen. So that's recording off, streaming off, video calling off and in attendance recording off. <clears throat> OK, so if we have a look at Meet itself. Now, I appreciate that um, obviously all of you will be able to see the screen um, in front of you, but I just wanted to show you a few things that you might not be aware of before I share my actual Meet screen um, and have a look at participant managing. So what you've got here, this is my year nines. Um, I've anonymized some of them. Um, but if you have a look at the bottom, you've got the blue shield. So when that when that comes up, what you'll get, sorry, someone wants to join the meeting. There we go. So if I just move this one out of the way, there we go. So what you'll get, if this blue shield at the bottom will come up here, these are your host controls. So with quick access off, then everybody has to ask to join the meeting, okay? And this includes people that dial in by telephone. Um, if you've invited everybody via Google Calendar, they will automatically be let in, um, even if you've got that one off, okay? If you've got it on, which I tend to do, participants from your domain can automatically join. So basically anyone that's got the at DHSB or at whatever your domain is can join automatically. And that's something that you guys would need to decide really um, at a, a, a school level because you might find not perhaps at primary school, but you might find that some students are, are trying to create um, accounts where they're trying to join outside of their domain so we don't know who they are trying to disrupt meetings so if you just make sure that quick access is off everybody has to ask to join but if it's on everyone can join that's in your domain so we can make sure that everyone who's at dhsb can just get quick access to the um the meeting but again like i say that that's up to you um Quick access is turned on by default. So 
after you start a video meeting, you can change the settings as often as you need using Meet on the computer. But if you have a recurring meeting, so if you use the same Meet link for the same class every week, it will save your settings for a future meeting. So if you turn quick access off and then return to the same Meet link in the future, it will remain off. Also in host settings here, you can decide whether you want participants to share their screen and whether you want them to send chat messages. And again, if you turn them off and then go back to a meeting with the same link, it will remember those um, settings. Also, what you've got down um, at the bottom here is just a couple of options for presenting your screen that I just wanted to talk about very quickly. So if you want your participants to, to look at everything that you can see, and that includes changing windows or going to a different piece of software or even your desktop of your computer, then you need to choose your entire screen. If you just want them to look at a particular window, so if you've got, say, Sims open in a window or if you've got PowerPoint open in a window or the whole of your Chrome, so your slides and stuff open in a window, then you can select a window. Or, like me, I've got a tab. So basically, this is just sharing my Google Slides. And that's best if you've got videos. If you've got videos embedded on a Google Slides, then really you need to be sharing just a tab. And that ensures that your students can hear and see everything you can. Um, a quick tip, if you are sharing audio, just mute your microphone. Otherwise, they get terrible feedback. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share uh, my screen from another computer. So hopefully this will work. OK, so what's really good about Google Meet is I can share or I can invite other people to share. I don't have to stop sharing. Um, it will just override what I've got on the screen. So this is me sharing from a different computer. Um, and the reason I want to do this is I just want to talk a little bit about some of the extra things that you've got, which you can't see from my Meet screen while I'm, uh, I have a, pre uh, a presentation. So really important with Google Meet is the ability to uh, manage your participants. So if you go up into the top right, I can see that I have 34 of you online and Google have now put in some extra tools. So if anybody on this call uh, wasn't muted, uh, maybe I could hear some background noise or maybe um, the students talking to their mum or, or whatever it is, I can actually click on the uh, microphone and I can mute that person. So if I was to click on here, um, I can mute that student for everyone in the call. Um, if I do that, I can't to, I, I can't then unmute them. Obviously, it would be um, a privacy issue if I could unmute someone else's microphone if they didn't want me to. But it's really handy if you could just go down through a class and you can just click and mute one of your students. And if they want to talk again, they can. They just need to go in and unmute themselves from their panel. You've also got, if I just go back to me, on the three dots here, you have the ability to remove a student from the meeting. So um, I don't know, they're being unruly or they're not listening or perhaps you, you know that they've, they've left their desk and it's, it's still on, so you can remove them from the meeting. And what that does is it then requires them to ask to join again. So if you throw someone out, um, the student will go out, they can go back onto the meet, but it will ask you as the meeting host whether you want them to come back in again. And you can obviously say no. If you kick them out twice, they lose the ability to ask to come back in again, but they can come back in on another session. So that's quite handy. So, um, Alexandra, are you able to mute all at once? No, currently that's not a feature. It is coming um, on the Meet roadmap, but it, it's not there yet. And it would be um, super handy. But at the moment, no, you're going to have to go down and just go and see if anyone's microphone is on and mute them that way. So, yeah, it, it would be really nice, uh, but it's not there yet. 
<clears throat> also at the top here, um, you've got host control. So if you don't want to go down to your blue shield here and just turn some things on and off. So I'm just going to stop you guys from sharing your screens for the minute. You can also do it at the top here. Um, so you can turn the ability to, for the chat to come on and off. Also, as um, I think you've all noticed, we've got the ability to monitor messages, which again, I can just turn off at the screen here to save me going back down to the shield. And this one here, I'm not going to talk about these uh, in the scope of this meeting today because these are enterprise only features. I'm, I'm happy to hang around at the end and discuss them, though. But you have the ability to, to set up smaller rooms so you can send your students um, and you can dip in and out of each room so you can move across the rooms. Um, you can get quick polls for everybody and you can also um, set up Q&A, which is, is very similar to the chat. But what you can do is, is make the question, you can delete the question if it's not appropriate. Whereas on the chat, I don't have the ability to obviously change that. Um, and it can be tempting for some students obviously to, to waffle on, um, on the chat. New feature for uh, Meet is the ability to change your background. So if you go down to the bottom right, you've got your three dots. If you click on this one, you've got uh, change background. Um, new this week or last week was the ability to upload your own background. So if you've got a school logo uh, or anything like that, you can actually add um, a background and have that. Or you can choose from any of these. Now, do be aware um, I don't have my camera on in this one, but if you do choose to have a background, again, it's quite intensive graphically. So if you if you're on if you know you're on low bandwidth or you know that your computer is not quite up to um, the job, it's probably best to leave those off. But you can have a slight blur um, or fully blur your background, which is quite nice if you don't necessarily want people to see where you are. Also on Meet now, we have the um, option to open a Jamboard. So for those of you that have not used uh, Jamboard in G Suite, it is, it's is—it's like an interactive whiteboard. So there, there are really good ways to use these in the classroom. And we look at some of those um, at the webinar tomorrow. But just to show you what you could do with a class, I'm going to open up um, a Jamboard that I've created hopefully yeah here we go in my bits and pieces if i click on this one this is just a template that i've i've made and i'm going to give you all edit access i'm going to send it to you and what will happen is in the chat there you go i've shared a jamboard file with you and what the class are able to do is all go on to the um jamboard and you can use on the left hand side here, you've got really nice sticky notes. So you could ask a question um, if I could spell. There we go, change the color, save it. And then I have the ability to move that around. And what my students quite like to do is, is to make it a little bit wonky uh, for some reason. And all of you that have been invited can add bits and pieces to the Jamboard. You've also got a text editor and um, our students at DHSB are really lucky their one-to-one -one Chromebooks are a Lenovo 500e so they've got the pencil so they can write directly onto their Jamboard and if you look at the top here you can have multiple um, topics so you could add more Jamboards as you go across um, and what you can do which we'll look at tomorrow is actually you can assign one of these each in classroom so they can actually have their own Jamboard and move things around um, which is really nice kind of addition to primary so if you have a look you can go through and, and each student can have a frame there's lots of potential um, here so if you want to have a go and, and stick a post-it note on then do the only thing um, I would say with, with Jamboard sometimes, if you've got a smaller screen computer, so I've just switched over to my large monitor, is that it can disappear onto another window and you've got to go and um, find it again. So this is Jamboard. Um, you can do a sticky note, pen, add an image, laser, and you can just, I can point at it like 
and do this, which the kids really like. Um, Jamboard will be covered tomorrow in a little bit um, of detail on the uh, classroom, Google Classroom one that's tomorrow. But it's um, it, it's something that we are finding as a, as a department that we're all using it in slightly different ways. Um, it's been really good fun. However, actually, just while we're talking about it, be aware that whilst I can see your emoji drawing, once the Jamboard's been done, you can't actually tie post-it notes to people. So um, I can't necessarily see who's written what. Now, the students don't know that, but obviously there is the potential to stick something a bit um, cheeky on it. I don't know what your students are like. Um, so that's Jamboard. We've done managing participants. A couple of other things in your uh, more options that you, you might be interested in are the layout. So this is really helpful if your computer is struggling. So if you don't necessarily have the best laptop in the world. Um, tiled, I like to have tiled on, they all are, um, when I've got my class for obvious reasons. Um, Unfortunately, in secondary school, most students seem to have it off. So sometimes it's 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 depressing and you're staring into the void of <laughs> just letters. So you can just turn them off. So Spotlight will will have what we're focusing on. Um, sidebar, exactly what it says. So you guys are there on the sides. Um, and Auto, it, it kind of does what it thinks is best. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it works that out if I'm honest though. So I, I tend to have it on tiled for a class, but for today, because there's lots of you and I'm, I'm very conscious that I was late <laughs> and so a bit embarrassed. I'm gonna stick it on spotlight so I don't have to look at all your faces. I just get rid of that. And down the bottom here, the maximum you can have, I think is 60. Um, let's have a quick look. That was 49, I was wrong. So you can't quite get everybody um, on. So I pop that, get rid of that, go back down here. And then um, captions are, are new-ish. Captions, it, it, there's been a lot of um, work around Google in their auto uh, detection of language and the use of captions. Um, there's no point me putting them on, on this screen um, my microphone's not on this one, but you can put your captions on. It may be, you know, we've got a couple of um, students that wear hearing aids. We also have um, some parents that are profoundly deaf as well. So the ability to turn this on, it's not perfect, um, but it is it is worth knowing that you have it on. Um, if you're recording, it won't record the subtitles. And new feature, you can put it into um, different language, should you want to um, give a webinar in French for which could be quite good, obviously, for modern foreign languages. So we'll get rid of that one. Down at the bottom here, it's just your details for your um, webinar. And you can see that our Jamboard has been attached to this. So it's here. If we just click on it, oh, it takes us to the um, Jamboard. A few of you have been using it there. And then I'm sure you're all aware, because we've been on... Um, these devices for a long time now, haven't we? The mute and the um, camera. So what I should be able to do now is just stop presenting. And then I can go back because it will, there we go, resume my presentation. There we are, nice and smooth. Okay, so. And do feel free, like I said, to pop some questions in the chat and we'll, we can have a look at those, but I will just get that one open. There we go. So I don't know if any of you are using Google Classroom yet, but the easiest way, in our opinion, to set up and manage your Meet is via Classroom. So for us, for students that might have 20 different classrooms, the students only ever need to go to Google Classroom every morning. So if they've got five subjects, they would navigate to Google Classroom. They'd go into their classroom and for every lesson they have with us, we do live lessons um, for every lesson. Their meet links are in one place. So if you have a look here, 
we've got the meet link um it's generated it's in classroom and it's visible at the top of everybody's classroom um here <clears throat> so this is my year 10 computer science class now if you do it this way and if you use classroom no student can click and join this meet until you have entered so if any of my students were here at say five to ten clicking on this link it would just keep saying video meeting has failed video meeting has failed so they can only join the link as soon as the teacher has clicked on it now there is a, a small caveat to that and that is at the bottom um the screenshot there that's what google like to call their green room so it's the waiting room so when you click on you'll all have noticed this you go into effectively a waiting room where you can check your audio and video now if you leave it on this screen students can join at, at that point so just be aware that if they click it if they go into classroom and, and you're there you need to be actually in the meeting otherwise they can join you can also throw them out of the meeting like i showed you and they can't join again they have to ask to join again um you can make the link visible or not visible so if you go into your settings which is here for each classroom you can see this is where you turn your meet link on if you're not happy um with the name google does uh, they are randomly generated and you know you i have seen some questionable <laughs> letter uh, placement so if you're not happy you can just click on here and reset that or if you felt students have been sharing the link to other students and it's a pain you can just reset it and then here you can turn that link um on and off and what that does is it makes this it makes this disappear effectively so what i tend to do is i tend to make sure i'm ready for my lesson i click on the link myself i join the meet i start recording and then i'll pop on make it visible um to students but that's just being doubly safe they can't join uh, unless you're already in the room also if you do it this way um you you can as long as you leave last they cannot rejoin the room after you've gone so if you do it via calendar and leave and you think the students have gone the students can go back and all join the same link again but if you do it through classroom as soon as they've gone um they can't come back in. So I've got a question. It says, can you stop the meeting for everyone or do you need to be the last to leave? Um, no, you, well, what you can do is you can go to participants and throw them all out and then you leave. Um, and again, it's like the mute all. We don't, there isn't a, a kick everyone out um, button yet. What tends to happen for me is um, students will be just so the lesson will finish at 11 and I might have three students who've clearly gone off to you know make a cup of tea or I don't know do something else and I just make sure I, I throw them off using the participant remove from meeting and then I leave and as soon as um, I've left and closed the meeting they cannot rejoin so unfortunately I don't know you, you can't stop it for everybody you have to go down through the um, list um joe says when we record our meetings they are saved as a meeting code in google drive <sighs> no so the questions are yeah james you can't unfortunately at the moment and and what we're having to do which isn't great because obviously we have five uh, lessons a day sometimes is as soon as it it comes through we get emails we go in and change the name at that point um you can sort them by order but no I, it's one of those things that all of the things that you're saying so the um the mute all and remove all and also the recording different names are all features that have been requested um and we're just waiting for hopefully google to actually make those um a reality but the more people that vote for them so i could send links the, the more likely they are to um do it but that that is a bit of a pain um, what we tend to do though is have the same meet link. So this one here, this ego 62, um, I've just, I know that's my year 10 just cause I use it so much, but it, it isn't ideal. Um, a couple of things on, on this one is that only you and co-teachers can create show hide and reset the, the meeting link. Um, no one else can do it. No students can do it. 
you can um, copy this meet link and send it out to anybody. You know, it works the same, but it just gives you that that extra security in knowing that you have to be there before the um, students. Um, and that really is is the essence of it. Now, as a couple of things, one, I am so sorry uh, about the start. I'm so grateful that you all hung around, and then I'm quite conscious that I was quite stressed, and I, I've kind of spoken quite quickly throughout this but the key points really to make sure that you're okay with safeguarding is is that your IT admin have checked the permissions for me so effectively it needs to be turned on for everybody but then you need to have those few things turned off for students so that they can't make their own video calls they can't record they can't get the attendance and they can't stream um, you can get extensions so you don't have to pay for enterprise edition there's there's lots available but they can cause issues and actually if you're having issue with google meet um, and you've got extensions on there then the first thing you should do is always try and remove those first then have a think about how many windows you've got open um, and whether you can actually shut some of those down if you've got a slower computer and don't forget there is a google um, dashboard which you can go to and if they're having any worldwide issues you can actually see that it's Google with issues and, and not your meet service. Um, and our advice, if you are using Classroom, is to do that for your meet links. If you're not, then just generate a meet link from meet.google.com. If you invite students via the calendar, they have too much control. They can come back into the meeting and they can join the meeting before you. I am happy. Oh, there is a question. We have lots of participants in Google Meet. We can't always see everyone in tar view. Can you swipe through to see the other students that aren't on your screen? Not that I'm aware of, James. We're not, uh, I say we, I'm, I'm not Google. Google aren't quite up with the, you know, the corporate heavies of Zoom um, or even Teams yet. But again, hopefully it, it's coming soon. The good thing, if you can't see everybody though, um, and you want to specifically see the people that are talking, if you have spotlight view, I'm resetting when obviously I've seen my son in his um, in Google meets and lots of them are talking. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it isn't ideal. And I think what often happens is it resizes them if it's not coping well with the, the graphics as well. Um, I'm happy to hang around. If anyone has any questions, feel free to do unmute um, and let me know. If not, pop them in the, in the chat. Uh, if you are disappearing, then thank you so much for coming. I hope it's been useful. Um, and I hope that, you know, some of those tips just, just make it a little bit easier for you to set those up. Um, do feel free to email me. There is another webinar uh, tomorrow specifically around the use of Google Classroom, which starts at, at four o'clock. I've been assured that there will be no more <laughs> um, unforeseen power outages tomorrow. So thank you all very much um, for today. And like I say, I'll, I will hang around to take any further questions.